Hey Cake Charms and welcome back to another video. Now it's a really exciting week this week because we are celebrating the release of a brand new book by a very dear friend of mine. Now I'm sure Jane's patisserie needs no introduction at all, but we are super, super proud of Jane because after years and years of working so, so hard on her baking blog, she has finally released her first ever book and it features so many amazing recipes. Now, I was actually sent this copy by Jane's publisher, so first of all, thank you very much to them, and I'll put the little ad gifted thing on the screen somewhere, but I would have bought it anyway, if I'm honest with you, because it looks absolutely amazing. And what I love about Jane's recipes is that you know she tests them and tests them and tests them until they are absolutely perfect. Every single one I've ever used has come out absolutely brilliantly, and I'm really looking forward to getting stuck in to her book. So much so that I thought in this week's video, we would actually have a go at one of the recipes in the book, put it to the test and see what we think. So I guess without much further ado, let's get to the video. To be honest with you, there are so many recipes in Jane's new book that I actually had no idea where to start. So I ended up putting a shout out over on Instagram, and if you're not already following me, I'll uh, put my, my little tag on the screen for you. Go and follow me there now. I can wait. But anyway, I put a shout out over on Instagram and I asked people what recipe they thought I should tackle. Now I had quite a few responses, including one for cinnamon rolls, which is one of my absolute favourite things to eat, but they also take hours and hours and hours, not ideal for a YouTube video. So I kind of kept perusing through them and then somebody said I should have a go at this recipe here, the one on the cover, which is for a salted caramel cake. Now first of all, who doesn't love salted caramel? But I also thought I can get some pretty good photos of the cake next to the book with a picture of the cake as long as it looks pretty good. So in this week's video, that's what we're going to do. We are going to have a go at the recipe for Jane's salted caramel cake from her brand new book, Jane's Patisserie. And as you guys hate really long intros, I suggest we probably ought to just get started. So, um, best do that. You know things are getting serious when the wide angle lens comes out. But anyway, let's make a salted caramel cake. So, this recipe is very much split into three parts. We're going to be, cake, I think it's the last one. There we go. So there's the, the cake, then there's the buttercream, and then there is the decoration. So we're going to start with the cake. And as you can see, I am using my K-Mix today. It does give the instructions for doing it in a bowl, but what can I say, I'm lazy. So I'm gonna pop this to the side, try and keep it safe and out of danger. And the first thing we're going to do is cream together our butter and our sugar. Now we're using soft light brown sugar today, which is nice because that's gonna give us a really nice caramelly molasses-y flavor, which of course makes sense in a salted caramel flavored cake. And then I'm using my creaming beater to cream them together until they're really nice and soft and light and fluffy. As always, we're gonna start on a really slow speed just to make sure we don't end up wearing it and then we'll gradually increase that to kind of a medium, low to medium speed. And just leave it to run. If I pop this up, hopefully you can see it's got a really lovely pale color. So if I just give the beater a bit of a scrape just to make sure all of those ingredients are fully combined. And then we're gonna go in with the rest of the ingredients, kind of all in one go, it seems to be. So that's the eggs, the flour, and the baking powder. What's great about kind of doing this combination of the creaming method and the all-in-one method is it means we're not gonna give our, our mix a chance to curdle by adding the eggs before the flour, but it's really important not to over-mix it so that we don't activate the gluten in that flour, giving us quite a dense cake, but I'm sure it will be absolutely fine. Okay, so there's my eggs, there's my flour, which I've already sifted into this bowl, and there is my baking powder. So I guess I'm just gonna pour them straight in. Now 
and back on with that beater. And I'm literally just going to mix that until it looks like all the ingredients are combined, which they already are. So no over mixing. As I say, we don't want to activate that gluten in that flour because that will end up giving us quite a dense bready cake. Nobody wants a dense bready cake now, do they? Okay, pop that to the side, get that bit that I just smeared over there off. And then I'm just gonna jump in with my spatula just give it one final quick mix just to check there's no little pockets of butter or flour or anything like that, but it's looking pretty good. You'll see it's quite a thick cake mix. It's definitely more of a British cake mix than an American one. That's what we're used to over here. And then this is going to get divided between three eight inch sandwich tins. And I'm using my silicone ones today, just because I have loads of these. Um, I bought these last time I did a, a rainbow cake, so I had one for each colour. And they don't get used very often, so I figured today's the day. And the great thing about silicone, to grease and line them, all I do is give them a quick spray with the PME cake release spray. I don't use any greaseproof paper or anything like that, and it does the job perfectly. They will just pop out when they're ready. I'm going to try and be as even as I can when I'm separating this cake mix into the three tins. You can weigh them, of course, but for a cake at home, I never do. You want to keep them reasonably even because, of course, if one's a lot bigger than the others, it will take a lot longer to bake. So it's worth bearing that in mind, but other than that, it will be fine. So this is what they look like. So now I'm going to spread these out using my spatula just to make sure they are fairly even and flat. Now I've been very organised and I've got my oven preheating so I'm just going to go and pop these in there and then we'll carry on with the next stage of the recipe. See you in a second. Okay so the cakes are in the oven and next it's time to make our salted caramel buttercream. So we have another bowl for the mixer and the first thing we are going to do is Beat the butter on its own until it's nice and loose and soft. There we go. Creaming beater again because favourite. And this time I'm going to go on quite a high speed because I want this butter to be as light and soft as possible. After about four or five minutes, you should end up with something really nice and pale. And don't forget, if you want a really white buttercream, I do have a video right here on my channel which I will link up in the top corner. For the record, my camera mirrors me, so I'm never sure which way I'm pointing or whether I'm pointing the right way. I know what I mean. So as always, I'm going to give the beater a quick scrape off. And then I'm going to sift in half of the icing sugar. Does Jane say to do that? Um, she does it in one go, but I'm going to, I'm going to do it in two go, because I always do. So, also I've got awful supermarket icing sugar again, why will I not ever learn my lesson? So it's really chunky and horrible, so it's going to take me about 10 minutes to sieve it, so bear with. In fairness to them, it's not as bad as it used to be, or it has been. So um, maybe we'll let them off. Start on a slow speed so that we don't end up wearing all that icing sugar. And I'm going to turn it up to a kind of a medium speed just until I can't see that icing sugar anymore. It doesn't take very long at all as you will see. 
Done. Icing sugar's gone, so sift in the other half. And again, back on the mixer, and just mix it until just combined on that kind of low to medium speed. If you've got a K-mix, I'm using number three. Okay, and to flavour our buttercream, we're going to be using some salted caramel. And what I love is that the book gives us a proper shortcut. We don't actually have to make our own caramel. We're using just a tin of caramel, and we've just added a pinch of sea salt to it. So, I'm just gonna stir that salt through. Hopefully you can see that somewhere. And then we're gonna add about half of this caramel mix into our buttercream. Watch me now not do a very good job of doing just half. So, I'm just gonna mix that through. And that should hopefully give us a really delicious caramelly buttercream. Now I'm sure I've talked about this before, but I'm not a big fan of leaving my mixer running for ages and ages with a buttercream. To allow that sugar to really dissolve into that butter, what I like to do is just leave it for as long as I can. So I've made it while my cakes were in the oven. And then it's going to have all of the time that the cakes are finishing baking and the time it takes them to cool down. So just sit there, really allow that sugar to dissolve. And then when I'm ready to assemble my cake, I'll give it one final mix, as you'll see. And hopefully we will have a beautifully smooth buttercream. But again, just like with the cake mix, I'm going to give it one more final mix with the, um, by hand with the spatula, just to make sure all that caramel is combined. All that butter is nice and smooth. There's no little pockets of icing sugar. And I have to say, this smells absolutely amazing. Kind of looks a similar color to James. Hopefully I'm on the right track. And if you think I'm not gonna taste it. Nice. It's caramelly, but it's not like overpoweringly so. And just that little pinch of salt means it doesn't end up too salty either. I'm not a fan of really salty salted caramel, which I think some people are, I think some people can be quite heavy handed, but definitely not in this case. So I'm gonna pop this here, cover the bowl with a little bit of cling film. And then we can just forget about this until we are ready to assemble our cake. So uh, I guess I can have a break now and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay, so it's a few hours later and my cakes are baked, they are cooled, and we are ready to begin assembling everything together. Now, I will confess, after my big silicone, don't need to line it and everything, my cakes did stick a little bit. So if you have a silicone cake tin, or silicone cake tins, I should say, I probably would recommend for this recipe still lining the bottom with uh, greaseproof paper, simply because it could be slightly stickier because of the light brown sugar we were using or what have you. It could just be that my silicone tins decided to embarrass me in front of all of you, but who knows. So anyway, we are ready to bring this baby together. So first job is to give our buttercream a final quick beat. like so, and then I move my cakes to the side. I think I shared this tip in last week's video, but if you are building a cake straight onto a cake stand, if you grab a Lazy Susan and just pop a little bit of non-slip matting on top, you can essentially use your cake stand as a turntable, which hopefully, as you'll see, will make life a lot easier when we are finishing up this cake. So I'm gonna begin by just taking a small amount of that buttercream and just spreading it onto the cake stand and that will just act as a kind of glue to hold everything together. And then we can take the first layer of cake and simply place it on top. Then we're just gonna take some more of that buttercream and then use that 
offset spatula to just kind of spread that out evenly. Once we've done that, we can go straight on with the next layer of cake and do exactly the same thing again. When it comes to the last layer of cake, I'm going to flip it over and put it on upside down because that would just help me to get a squarer edge when I come to do the final layer of buttercream. If you're at all nervous about doing that, it does help to chill your cake just very slightly because it will make everything a bit sturdier. It does, however, show you where my cake stuck to the, uh, the cake tin. We're going to pretend we can't see that. And then we're just going to take a generous amount of that buttercream. We're going to use that to crumb coat the entire cake. Now the purpose of this first layer of buttercream is very much just to seal all those crumbs inside. So it doesn't need to be perfect, it just needs to be kind of even and covering the whole cake. So once you've done that, Jane says to pop it in the fridge for about 15 minutes. And what that's going to do is help this first layer of buttercream begin to set, giving us a nice crusted top that we can then do another layer of buttercream over the top. So I'm going to go pop this in the fridge and uh, I'll see you guys in about 15 minutes. And then after about 15 minutes, it's time to go in with another layer of buttercream and this will be our top coat. Now I will say this buttercream is quite soft because of the addition of that salted caramel. It's not as stiff as normal buttercream. So just be aware of that. Don't forget I do have a video on how to crumb coat and top coat and everything. Uh, a cake within my Cake Basics series, so I'll link that up in the corner for you to check out if this is your first time doing so. And then, once you're happy with your final coating of buttercream, I guess it's time for the scary bit, which is the caramel drip. And I only say it's scary because I know that caramel is going to be a lot runnier than chocolate. I'm only going to get one chance to do this right. So I'm going to pipe mine. Jane suggests you can pipe it or spoon it on, but I'm going to start by just piping around the edge. And I imagine you don't need a huge amount because, again, it's gonna be runnier than chocolate. So I'm just going to allow a little bit here and there to go over the edge, like so. You know, I'm concentrating when I go quiet. Sorry, I should be doing it towards the camera, shouldn't I, so you can actually see what I'm doing. And then we can just use the rest of this caramel over the top, just to kind of top everything off. Again, only when I'm videoing myself. Where did I ruin it? Over there. So that's gonna be the back. And then I'm just gonna use one of my little acetate smoothers to just kind of Spread everything out nice and flat. I could use a palette knife, but I uh, might already have put those in the dishwasher. So I've literally done this the same way I did the chocolate drip when I made my own birthday cake. So if you've seen that video, you'll have seen me do this before. And then Jane suggests popping this in the fridge for around about 15 minutes just to allow that um, caramel to kind of start to stiffen up and then we can finish things off. So I'm gonna go and do that, and then it will be the home stretch. Okay, and now that's had a chance to chill, it's time for those finishing touches. So we are using a closed star tip with the rest of that buttercream, and we're going to pipe some swirls. So I'm gonna start at the back just in case they look terrible. I don't know if I'm gonna have enough buttercream, you know. Might have to do some mini ones. Good enough. And then finally we're topping with some sprinkles and some chocolate caramel sweets or Rolos. So I've got some vermicelli uh, chocolate sprinkles. 
I've literally just copied exactly what's in the book. I'm going to try not to drop them over the edge because they'll get caught in the drip and that won't look great. And then, of course, the all important Rolos. And there we go. Okay, I'm going to take some beauty shots and then I'll come back and wrap things up. So there you go guys, that was my attempt at one of the recipes from Jane's Patisserie's brand new book, Jane's Patisserie. Um, as nominated by one of you guys, I had a go at the salted caramel cake, which appears on the cover. And uh, I think I did a pretty good job, if I'm honest. As always with Jane's recipes, it was so easy to follow and I'm really happy with how it came out. Normally I would finish this video up by cutting into this cake, but I do think I want to give it a little bit longer to set. So you'll have to keep an eye on my social media over the next day or two to see if I post a cutting shot. I might decide to give it to someone, you never know. But anyway, um, if you want to have a go at this recipe yourself, you'll probably notice I haven't actually shared it in the video description or anywhere because it's not my recipe to share. So if you want to have a go, you'll have to pick up your own copy of Jane's Patisserie. But I'm not entirely mean. I may have picked up a couple of extra copies myself. Yes, I even paid for them. And they're to give away to two of you. So if you would like to get your hands on one of these two copies of Jane's Patisserie by my friend Jane Dunn, all you need to do is head down to the comments below this video and let me know what would you want to bake up first. Would you have a go at the salted caramel drip cake or would you have a go at one of Jane's amazing cheesecake recipes, her cookies, one of the other cakes? There are so many amazing recipes in here. So yeah, just head down and let me know what you would want to bake first. The competition will be open until Friday the 20th of August, so that gives you almost two weeks to get your entries in, and I'll announce the winner in an upcoming video. Once again, thank you so much to Jane and to her publisher for sending me this copy of her brand new book. It is absolutely stunning, and I'm super, super proud of Jane. And um, thank you all of you for joining me as we attempted one of the recipes from it. As I say, I'm super pleased with how it came out, and I hope you are too. And if you did enjoy this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up down below. If it's your first time visiting Mr. Baker's Cakes here on YouTube, don't forget to hit that big red subscribe button before you go. And if you click the bell icon, you'll also get a push notification every time I upload a new video, which incidentally, I usually do every Sunday at 10 a.m. But other than that, I think that's everything. So once again, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you at the same time next week. Until then, stay safe, take care, and as always, Happy caking. Bye everyone.